has been one of my busiest years. I did Dirty Laundry. I did One Versus 100 on NBC. I did um, uh, Celebrity Fit Club. Mm -hmm. I've been on TV more than I've ever been on TV. That's yeah, crazy. That's true. I got started, uh, I was out of college. I was three in business administration, a minor in mathematics. Um, and I was like everybody else. I was working. Um, not really unhappy in my career, but I knew that I needed more joy in my life. Um, I've always been a businesswoman. At the time when I started doing comedy, I owned my own business. And it was running successfully. Comedy made me actually quit my business. Um, I was doing a lot of things. I was owning my own business. I was substitute teaching algebra. And um, I was working at an employment agency. So I was hustling. And it was just something in me that said I had a passion for it. I said, let me try it. I tried it. It felt good to my soul. And I've been rocking and rolling ever since. I can see the maturity in myself now. Um, I think that the project that I put out now is excellent work. It's 15 years of material, but it's a grown some more. Business-wise, I'm producing it. I produced it. I directed it distributed, worked on the distribution deal and everything myself. And not only that, I've, um, I have two more, I have a documentary that I'm producing right now. It's finished, I'm getting ready to start shopping it. I have stand-up out there, and it was in your face, and it was raw, and it was, it was on point, but I wanted to have my own signature thing, my own special, so I waited, and I waited, I'm glad that I waited, because uh, business-wise, I made a better move to wait. And I always knew that I would get more for it if I waited. I always knew that. And plus, um, I wanted to be able to tour. See, I'm a stand-up comedian, meaning like the road is what I've always had. If I had a television deal, I would have done a special a long time ago. But since this is where I make my money, why would I go out, do a special, give away all my material, and then try to hit the road with the same material? That's, a, that's one thing that's different about me than a lot of other comedians. I write. I'm a writer by nature. My dad is an English teacher and a writer, so I'm a writer by nature. I can outwrite the best of them, meaning like I will always have hot material. I will always show up and I will always blaze the stage because I'm writing. You guarantee you're going to see new material. Not to diss anybody else, not to hate on anybody else, but I see comedians rolling through the walk rolling city to city for years using the same material and they bragging about, oh, I ripped it up. If you've been doing the same material for three years, you should rip it up. You should rip it up and tear it up every single time. And you should be ashamed of yourself as a comedian not to even challenge yourself and, and to take audiences for granted. You know, people paying $25 and $30 to see you and you using the same material that you've been using all these years. That's, that's disrespectful to the game. It really is. A lot of female comedians, we've been criticized. I know I have. I'm not even going to say other people. I've been criticized for, oh, well, the only reason why she's funny is because she talks about sex. I will show them that I'm a beast in this shit. Mm -hmm. I ain't only got to talk about sex. I'm going to talk about male issues, things that men talk about, and show you that I'm, I'm with it. I'm dimensional, and I'm going to do this. I've been in this business for 15 years. I'm successful at what I do, and I can no longer sit by and wait for Hollywood to validate me, validate who I am. In the streets, in, in, in the hoods, all around America, in urban America, and in, in white households also, they know who I am. And... I need to capitalize on that myself as a business person. You know, they they trust me as a comic, they understand and they support my work. Mm -hmm. So I need to, as a businesswoman, start capitalizing on some of that. I'm a documentary fiend. I just love documentaries. Michael Moore on down to um, shows, HBO, Showtime documentaries. So I'm just picking subjects and things that interest myself. I'm doing also doing a documentary about people who miss their teeth and choose not to replace them. That shit is deep for me. Like. You see your teeth missing, and you choose to just act like we don't see that shit. I mean, like, that is amazing to me. <laughs> and I'm doing a documentary about this. I'm picking things that interest myself. I know that I'll always be financially stable. Um, this is why I'll be adventurous, doing, doing projects overseas. I want to explore all the things that I'm interested in. Like, I've gotten to a point where I'm learning to trust, trust my creative mind. Like, I still struggle with the fact of, am I funny or not? Like, I still struggle with that at times. But when I go out on stage every single weekend and blaze it up for 1,500 people and they laugh, 
being in that validates me. I always wanted to be a comedian that said things that most women thought about, but they never did. Or they never would have the nerve to say, or they were too afraid to be judged. So I want to do a documentary about things that people always thought about. But hmm, I never researched that. I would take advantage of the internet. I would have some more TV. And it'll be all my projects on TV doing me. I I really intend to leave the country and do some stuff too. But I will always do stand up. I'm tired of traveling, so I want to be in one spot. I want to blaze the stage in Vegas. People come to see me and do my thing. Get ready for the ride. Be true to the game. This is not a game for people that's weak at heart. And I and I'm and I'm so tired of people disrespecting the game. Meaning like it's one thing for you to be barbershop funny, but bitch, you gotta put a pen to a paper. And don't bullshit with it. Go up there and make them respect us as female comedians. I don't want nobody to give me nothing because I don't want to owe nobody nothing.